Hello and welcome to Hawk Magazine. We have another exciting lineup for you. On today's show, we'll talk with Hilbert's head soccer coach, Johnny Black, about his plans to grow the men's team. Next, we'll hear from the soccer team's defenseman, Jacob Donner, and the team's trip to Northern Ireland. Switching gears to American football, we'll meet up with head coach of the football team, Ted Egger, on developing his team for the new season. And last but not least, we'll talk with junior linebacker Tyvon Roach on his developing team. All that and more, next on Hawk Magazine. Hi, welcome to Hawk Magazine. I'm Chris Cronin. We are here today with men's soccer coach, Johnny Black. Coach, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. Oh, of course. Um, a couple of questions for you. Uh, first off, do you have any playing experience? Uh, yeah, um, I've played um, in Northern Ireland, where I'm from, uh, since childhood. Everybody plays. It's just the main sport. Uh, everybody plays in school. Everybody plays club. Everybody plays. Uh, when I was fortunate enough at 12, 13 years old, signed a professional contract with uh, Tottenham Hotspur. And then once uh, my education finished at 15, I moved across to London to live and play. Um, sign, you can't turn professional until you turn 17, so you play for a year on a youth training scheme with the club and then turn professional at 17 on my birthday and then had to retire a couple of years uh, later with uh, some stomach problems. Um, so basically, I couldn't get uh, to play in weight at all, so I couldn't play anymore. So that's how I switched into coaching at the Tottenham Academy. And then uh, from there, just went through my coaching licenses and then was looking for more opportunities and moved to America. Now, many don't know that uh, the men's soccer team had an um, opportunity to go to Ireland. Can you talk about how that came about? Yeah, so the guys, um, all sports at Hilbert College fundraise, and they fundraise and work really hard to, to bring money into the programs to try and improve the student athlete experiences for everybody. Um, when I first got the, the job, the plan was originally to go on tour to Spain. The guys had fundraised for three, nearly four years of building up uh, money to be able to afford to go. Um, but I don't speak Spanish very well, so decided to take the guys to what I know best, which is Northern Ireland. So um, we fundraised all last season, and then uh, this past August we travelled uh, for nine days uh, to Northern Ireland, and um, it was just a really good experience. The idea was to make it to pre-season, so all freshmen, everybody that is attending Hilbert College on the men's soccer program came with us, and uh, some alumni went as well because they paid into the fundraising and it's only right that they were able to go as well um, so we played a couple of professional teams in Northern Ireland um, Lauren Football Club which is where I'm from uh, Inver Park so they're the current Northern Ireland champions uh, so to get to play in a big stadium was fun then we played Ballymacash Rangers um, in another stadium and it was just all around great experience uh, it wasn't just uh, soccer as well because obviously we're an academic institution so we toured a lot we went um to the Giants Causeway, um, which is uh, one of the natural wonders of the world. It's basically like big hexagons of stone that make a pathway through the sea between Northern Ireland and Scotland. And uh, it, it really interesting, the guys loved it. Then we went to different locations where Game of Thrones was filmed. Uh, we went to a place where the Iron Islands, it's called in the show, was filmed. So it's like a rural harbor. And then we also did things like went to the Titanic Quarter and went to the Titanic Museum to learn a little bit more about the Titanic and how it was built because it was built in the Belfast shipyards and then finally we went round the um, museum um, I think was it Hamilton I can't even remember now to be honest but mm -hmm. but uh, we went round where the US Rangers were founded actually in Northern Ireland um, Army Rangers and uh, just learned a bit of history basically about it and tried to build a connection culturally between the US where the guys are from and then going to Northern Ireland and, and learning about the culture there so it was all around a lot of fun but the most important thing from my my perspective was that we fundraised to the point where no one had to pay a cent towards it so the fundraising money covered everything so no matter how much money you had in the bank and you're at Hilbert if you're a men's soccer player you were able to go so it was really important to me and, and it was a super experience for everybody I think. What do you think the future holds for Hilbert soccer? 
Um, just continuing to grow. Uh, so program when I um, first got here and was fortunate enough to get the job, we, we hadn't won quite a number of seasons, won a game. So the first thing was trying to turn that around and start winning some games. And we've been fortunate enough to win 10 games in the last two years. And, and we made the playoffs the last two seasons as well. So uh, we finished sixth this year um, in conference. So the idea going forward is to keep growing the program, increase the numbers on the roster so practices are more competitive and then continue to grow with quality and move higher positions because we've been sick the last two years so now's the time to kick on and try to get a home playoff for instance so finish third fourth or higher in the conference so just continue on the path we're on and it's just going to take some time because Rome wasn't built in a day so you're not going to go from zero to 60 you've got to build it up slowly so we're, we're doing really well it's just a matter of bringing in some more quality student athletes and just add to what we already have and we're in a good spot well, Coach, that's all my questions. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks a lot. Today's guest is Jacob Donner from the men's soccer team. Jacob, welcome. Nice to be here. First off, where are you from? I'm from right here in Hamburg, New York. Um, what attracted you to Hilbert? The, uh, the ability to play soccer in college because, I mean, Hilbert has a lot of educational programs that really appealed to me, but soccer's been a huge part of my life, so being able to continue it at one of the highest levels was, was really attractive. Very nice. Uh, speaking of your love of soccer, how long have you been playing soccer? I've been playing soccer since I was at least four. Wow, that is a long time. Um, can we just talk about your freshman year and how it ended in injury, but then coming back to your sophomore year and scoring your first goal, can you just talk about your attitude getting back from injury and then, you know, scoring your first goal from your sophomore year? Uh, yeah, so going down with the type of injury I had obviously wasn't ideal. Um, but yeah, no, coming back, it took a lot of mental strength to be able to come back and perform as well as I did for my sophomore season. Um, yeah, uh, staying up with PT, uh, making it through the second half of my freshman year uh, for school. Um, yeah, it took a lot, and I'm proud to be able to score my first goal. Congrats on that. Um, you and the soccer team got a chance to go to Ireland. Can you talk about the trip and the experience and the memories that you made on that trip? Ireland was beautiful. Um, uh, it was very green. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the scenes were amazing. Um, we got to go to the Giants Causeway, which was awesome. Um, yeah, spending time, with the, spending time with the boys was just a lot of fun, a ton of fun. Coach Black said it was a very intriguing trip. We had him yeah. on. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Can you talk about the stamina and endurance to it takes to play soccer? And being a defenseman, um, how do you have the endurance? Uh, yeah, so it takes a lot of takes a lot of preparation in the off season to be able to come in and have the stamina you need to play a full ninety minutes. Um, it's just a lot of running, and uh, it's important to have that stamina as well because when you get tired, you still need to be able to make the simple passes. Uh, you need to be able to. Uh, look around and track the people running in behind and all that. Can you just talk about the future of Hilbert soccer? Obviously, my freshman year, we improved drastically, getting our first win in I don't know how many years it was, but it was a long time. Then sophomore year, or my sophomore year, um, our record was very similar, but the competition we played was a lot better. So we made improvement off of that and Coach Black has a ton of recruits lined up. I know a couple buddies of mine coming to play for Hilbert next year. So we're, we're looking to get stronger. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, no problem. I'm here today with Coach Ted Edgar from the Hilbert men's football team. Coach, welcome. Appreciate it, Chris. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, I have a couple of questions for you. Okay. Before coaching, did you have any playing experience? I did. Um, I played my whole life, starting probably about seven years old, and um, ended up uh, playing college football at Lock Haven University. 
um, and you know finished up when I graduated from there and that was the last time I played but I was I was lucky enough to play in college and get that experience and and uh, kind of propelled me into what I'm doing now very nice um since you are sort of a newcomer to Hilbert what attracted you to Hilbert um, a couple of things. I think the, the, the vision of, um, you know, uh, Tim Sauer, athletic director, uh, Dr. Brophy, and just uh, the institution itself, um, you know, I think it's a great opportunity to bring a football program to this area and to um, Division Three football. And so it's an exciting time. I mean, we're, we're building a program and, um, you know, we're one of two Division Three programs in the city of Buffalo. So it's uh, a lot of good things going on. Before coming to Hilbert, where did you coach before? So prior to Hilbert College, I was the head football coach at uh, uh, Community College in Ohio, Hocking Community College, um, and uh, spent three years there. We finished there. Uh, my last season there, we finished fourth in the country um, in, in the junior college rank. So it was a it was a good time there. And um, and then previously before that, I was a head coach at a another junior college in, in South Mississippi, Pearl River Community College. So, uh, but I've been doing this for 23 years and been lucky enough to be all over the country and uh, different levels and uh, different schools and um, had a lot of great experiences. Very nice. Um, so coach, you, how do you build off the momentum of the last two games? I know they weren't wins, but if you sure. look, um, you got something rolling at the end of the year. Yeah, you know, um, just like anything else, I think when, when guys put in the commitment and the hard work, they're going to continue to improve, continue to get better. And, and I think our guys uh, did that. I think our guys got a lot of great experience this year, um, a lot of game time experience, which was needed. Um, and they started to find out what it, what it means to be successful and, and, and how to win football games. Um, and I think we're in position the, the last few games. Um, Gallaudet, we had an opportunity to win that game, um, you know, going into the fourth quarter. And uh, we just got to, you know, continue to build and continue to uh, learn how to finish finish games. Um, but, you know, I thought our, um, you know, I would like to have gotten a couple wins toward the end. But, I, again, I think our guys um, started to put themselves in position to, to win those football games. Perfect. Um, can you just talk about more about, I know we just talked about the vision of Hilbert football in year three, but can you just more go in depth about it? Like what, you know, where you see it going from there? Sure. We just got to, we got to um, continue to improve and, um, you know, get into the weight room and have a spring ball. This will be the first spring ball that this program has had. Um, so just getting a lot of repetition and, and our guys, you know, um, continue to build off of some of the things we did last year and um, get ourselves, you know, ready for Empire 8 play. So I think that, you know, um, we're going to have a lot of guys that are going to continue to get a lot of experience and continue to uh, get bigger, faster, stronger. And so we just got to really focus on that. Um, thank you. Um, coach, I saw you at a previous stop, as you talked about, as a coach in Mississippi. Can you describe the difference between um, football in the south and football in the north of the United States? Um, you know, I think that, you know, every area, um, you know, has, again, d different levels of football. You know, down south, it's a uh, it's a year round thing, you know, so guys are in high school or continue, they play spring, they play spring ball, they have summer programs, they have a whole bunch of different things. And, and I think that, that um, athletes uh, down there tend to focus on one sport more than uh, be multi-sported. Um, whereas up here, I think guys, you know, especially in the smaller schools are, are gonna be, you know, a, a two, three sport athlete. So um, down south, you see a lot more guys focusing on, you know, basketball or baseball or uh, football year round very nice thank you so much for thank your you. time appreciate today. it thank you brother. i'm here with tyvon roach from the men's football team tyvon welcome thank you thank you for having me you're welcome uh we have a couple of questions for you today all right first of all where are you from uh chico well, buffalo new york but i went to chico Aga central high school very nice yeah. uh what interests you in coming to hilbert <laughs> I got a text on Twitter. Oh. Um, yeah, I was kind of like chilling at home for like the last two years during COVID. I wasn't really in school or playing football. I was taking like classes here and there. And then I got a text from Coach Smith just saying like, do you want to play again? And I said, all right, sure. That is one unique way of getting recruited. Yeah. Um. 
Yes. Um, I see you won most improved player in 2022. Congratulations. Thank you. And then having 100 tackles this year, can you talk about the off-season prep and how you prepared for the off, uh, for the season that you had this year? I actually didn't really have an off-season. I got hurt during lacrosse season. So I got cleared July 25th, and the season started August 9th. So... I, I worked, I did like landscaping and stuff, but I honestly didn't have much of an off season this year. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, speaking of your 100 tackles, can you just talk about why you have a nose for the football? Uh, I would say it's more instinctual. I don't know, it's just kind of, I've been playing for a while since 2008. So just, I guess the flow of the game. In high school, I had really good coaches. Um, I did go to a smaller school, but we had position coaches, you know, film training. So, um, just I was I had the resources to be able to gain that deeper understanding of the game. And you know where to line up on the field. Of course, yeah, I, I have to. I play linebacker, so I kind of I know where everyone lines up. I have to know everyone's yeah. job, the play, what they're running, almost, you know. So it's kind of yeah, just yeah. instinctual. Yeah. Um, where do you see Hilbert football in the next couple of years? Um. I definitely see a lot of room for improvement, but I just also see a lot of potential, um, especially with this coaching staff, knowing what they've done at previous schools. Um, in similar situations like this, you know, rebuilding programs or new programs, they've got them all to be successful. After this year, it's hard to look and say that, you know, it was better, but discipline-wise, it was better. Just, you know, the kids staying confident. And I've seen I've seen growth every week. You know, the scores got closer every week. So um, in years, I definitely see a lot of good things. Yeah, we talked to Coach Iger about those last two games and yeah. how, you know, the scores were close yeah. and all that. Um, why is it important for kids to be involved in football at an early age? Um, I feel like you, it's hard to get used to getting hit. Like, as you get older, you know? Yeah. So when you're young, it's kind of just, it becomes normal, I guess. So I feel like getting kids in young, and I wouldn't say too young. I coach Little League. Yeah. So I coach eight-year-olds, and honestly, I think they're too young to be, like, playing tackle football because they're too young to even really teach how to tackle yeah. correctly or how to, like, have that body control. So if you were, like, in um, a position to say this is where kids need to be, you would up the age? Yeah, for sure. But I would say flag football is good. It just teaches teamwork, you know, and it kind of shows you that, like, no matter what your position is in, in life, bigger picture-wise, you know, it still kind of matters, you know, whether you're defense, I mean, football-wise, offensive line, quarterback, receiver, you know, it kind of just shows how to operate in a team environment. It takes a village, correct? Yeah, for sure. Um, can you talk about the importance of the um, defense to the game of football? It's everything. Because, <laughs> like, I can still win a game if they don't score, you know, even if our offense doesn't score. If the other team doesn't score, I can win. Like, I will have to score. But, um, of course, you need the offense, but the defense kind of sets the tone. It, it kind of shows how this game is going to go. I like to be on the field first because – I like to show my presence. So I feel like it's more of a, I guess for lack of better words, intimidation thing, you know? <laughs> like yeah. Just, you send your dogs out and you start Yeah. Doing it. And, you know, you talked about being first on the field, and that's that opportunity to set the role of the game or right. set the tone, yep. rather, of the game. Um, one more question. What uh, are your off-the-field hobbies? Off-the-field hobbies. It's kind of hard to call this an off the field hobby because I play here, but look, I would say lacrosse. You know, I've never played lacrosse before, so like being able to just come here and play, it's it's kind of relaxing because like I don't yeah. know, I don't have like such a big role, so I would say like lacrosse or I like to read. People don't really know that, but I, I read a lot, so I would say reading. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today. No problem. Thank you. That's all for this edition of Hawk Magazine. Be sure to stay tuned for future shows, and please remember to support our Hawks. To that I say, Hawk yeah!